Zack Schneider's Justice League. Um, so, this movie, uh, wow. It feels more like a television show, for one thing. I paid $10 for it. Crave is 50% off at the timing of this video. Uh, and then 50% off the HBO package. So, it's the best $10 I've ever spent, to be honest. Um, let's get in. I'm not going to go into spoilers or anything. but uh, So, if you thought that Sonic the Hedgehog and the, the people behind it spending $50 million to redo the entire movie in order to you know make a better product... This movie defeats that by spending $70 million to create a much better Justice League film. This is the movie we should have got. I think there was rumors of a three-hour Justice League cut when it was being made. That got taken out. This Justice League is um, vastly different. And depending on how much of a fan you are of the DC characters is going to be how much of a, you know, you're going to enjoy it. If uh, the thought of a four-hour Justice League movie makes you go, ugh, because you don't, you know, you're done with the whole franchise, you don't care, you just want to watch new stuff, then you're not, you're not going to like it. But this is pretty much fan service the movie. And um, I'm going to get into some of the vague details. So the movie is two hours longer than the original Justice League. It, the with Joss Whedon cuts a vastly different thing. And watching this movie, everything's expanded. Pretty much uh, every scene has a little bit extra to it. There's like more breathing room. Uh, I believe, I don't think there's a single sequence in this movie that is the same as the old one. They change a few things here and there. There's a darker tone for the entire film. There's more blood and gore. There's a couple F-bombs. It doesn't feel too much like being edgy, but it definitely changes the entire tone of the movie. If you, you look at the poster of Justice League, the colors are very bright, but compared to, yeah, Zack Snyder's uh, new sort of uh, tone, it's very different and it's more epic. It's, it feels like there's more stakes. Lots of changes to the characters, for one thing. Cyborg gets the most, uh, you get to see his backstory, you get to see his emotional arc. Everything's there. It was all cut on the uh, on the cutting room floor, so we got one more sequence with the Flash, and also they dial down his obnoxious jokes, I guess. So he's more of a likable character because he's not like in your face trying to go like, "Hey, I'm the funny one." Uh, Wonder Woman. All the sequences are pretty much the same. The only difference is we get a few more scenes with the Amazons, and uh, they change the tone of some of her action sequences, so she's a bit more violent, and. Who else? So oh, yeah, Aquaman gets a few more, a little bit here and there. Most of his stuff stayed intact. They just uh, changed uh, an extra scene here and there. Uh, yeah, the, the biggest change was definitely Cyborg. But the other biggest change was definitely the villains. Uh, Steppenwolf, they do the impossible. They make him more of a character. He's not just some brooding conqueror, but he has like an emotional story. Uh, emotional arc. He's got like something that he wants. There's a reason for it. But also, they dialed down his, his like ferocity, which is weird because they make him. Whenever he's the new action sequences, there's like how many? Is he, he's in one, two. He's in three action sequences out of the, like the six, and they make the Justice League seem more competent. I noticed that the movie does a great job of not doing any of the characters dirty. You know, there's no f Batman being knocked on the ground going like, oh, I'm bleeding, or you know, oh, I'm old, or I'm injured. And, you know, Flash doesn't fall over. All the characters are respected, even the villains. So Steppenwolf, he has his own backstory. He looks different. He looks more badass. He's got, like, this cool armor. And... Um, I noticed that, yeah, this movie, it feels like it went by so quickly. It's a four-hour movie, but I watched it in one sitting. I took a break for some snacks. But honestly, they make sure that every one of the six segments of the... They have like six title cards, six segments. Each of those has its own action sequence and climax. So it almost feels like you're watching four or five episodes of a really expensive miniseries all together at once. So the first action sequence is... Um, Steppenwolf arrives on Themyscira. The second action sequence is the Age of Heroes. The third one is the attack on Atlantis. Or not Atlantis in general, but like the outpost where the mother box is. Then the fourth one is the Gotham Harbor sequence. And then the fifth one is the Resurrection of Superman. And then six is the uh, the final battle. 
So there is plenty of action and each segment feels like it has its own action climax. But the movie is sort of supplemented by the really good character development. We get a lot more of Cyborg, for ma mainly Cyborg. And there's a little bit more uh, for everyone else. And everyone else is treated with respect, so it's really cool. Everything feels more cohesive for one thing. Little bits and segments here are sort of thrown in. There isn't a wasted moment. Not to say that this um, you know, film doesn't have flaws. Uh, for one thing, I didn't like the last two s sequences. They're like... Um, the epilogue, I guess, of sorts. They didn't really feel like they added much to it. They just, Zack Snyder, I guess, decided that he has free reign. He can just throw them in if he wants to. We're probably not going to get any, uh, what's it called, follow-up to those two scenes. So there's really no point in um, having them, but they're there. And uh, I guess the only other thing I'd say, sometimes the CGI is kind of bad and noticeable, like the Themyscira scenes. Um, but that's because, you know, in general, the whole action sequences is done differently. Also, you can tell some of the things too. Like for example, if you've watched Justice League 2017, you've seen the, the Wonder Woman fight scene where she uh, stops those terrorists. Um, and in this version, it's more violent and she's made to move quicker. So she's like hitting people and killing them and instead of just knocking them out. And it's a lot more violence. And yeah, the entire movie has a darker tone in general. And there's just giant chunks of the original 2017 film that just aren't in this movie. So they, I think they even like literally refilmed certain scenes as well. That way they didn't even use the same footage. That way they wouldn't have like, you know, it wouldn't look weird for one thing. You, and the whole movie's pretty much redone. And if a scene is the same, then they have like the same people there. They, they use the same shots, I think. Or they use the same footage and you can't tell. But either way, uh, yeah, the movie is definitely for the fans. Uh, it's, you know, an epic. It's, a, it's something that Martin Scorsese said that, you know, superhero films aren't art, you know. But, you know, some superhero movies can sort of go beyond that, like The Dark Knight, Captain America, um, Winter Soldier, um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Certain movies can sort of try to push that barrier beyond just being a superhero blockbuster. And this movie feels really epic. It feels like the Justice League movie we should have got. I, for one, enjoyed it immensely because it, I felt like a kid again, honestly. Like, uh, when certain scenes happened, I was like cheering and whooping, going like, woo, this is awesome. You know, this is what we should have had. And it feels like a culmination of a buildup because, you know, Zack Snyder did Superman and he did the Batman v Superman and then Justice League. And he had, you know, three movies planned, I believe, for the Justice League. So we only get some of what he was planning here, but it's nice that he gets to, you know, finish it. It's really cool. It's an interesting experiment. I don't know if this is a one off, but this is sort of something that can pave the way for future filmmaking. Um, there's no more constraints. You can't be like, oh, you can't make a three-hour superhero film. It's like we have Avengers Endgame, we have, you know, Justice League, the four-hour version. So who's to say we won't get a superhero epic next, you know? They can do whatever they want. If it drops on a streaming service, you can, you don't have to, like, tone it down in terms of, like, violence or swearing or length. You can do anything. And it also opens the door for... Uh, other potential DC projects that we haven't got yet, like a lot of people are waiting for Deathstroke the movie and um, Injustice, like the Injustice League, I guess, like, like a, a movie about all the villains, like Lex Luthor, Joker, and all them. And, you know, half the characters of this movie aren't going to move on. So we're not going to get more Superman, Batman, or Cyborg, unfortunately, but we're still getting Aquaman 2, Wonder Woman, three and maybe flashpoint so this definitely was a really interesting thing to watch i wasn't sure what to expect but it's the ultimate fan service movie it was really enjoyable the pacing is really great and uh you know it's uh nice to see what Zack snyder wanted to do before he was done dirty and in fact this is you know it's really great to see all this stuff happen after a lot of things just get left on the cutting room floor you know, like the, the, the 2017 film is pretty bad. I remember sitting there, you know, I've been a fan of Justice League since like the Batman, the animated series, you know, I've been a fan of DC since then, Re read all the, a lot of comics. And this is the, uh, the ultimate movie for DC fans. So I give uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League an eight and a half out of 10.